and welcome to Agenda. I'm David Spears. Well, 43 people died overnight in suicide bomb attacks in Baghdad. On Saturday, 42 died in bomb attacks in Karbala. Earlier in the week, dozens more were killed in blasts inside the Iraqi parliament building and on a bridge over the Tigris River. The death toll is staggering. It's hard to comprehend. And it comes despite the US sending in thousands more troops to Iraq to quell the violence. With Australia now about to send hundreds more troops to Afghanistan, the other terrorist front line, today we asked, is the war against radical Islamic extremism being won or lost? In a moment, our panel, Greg Sheridan and Paul Sheehan. First, though, the US Ambassador Robert McCallum joins us for his first interview with us here on Agenda. Ambassador, thanks for joining us this afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here, David. Thank you for having me. Well, Australia is sending more troops to Afghanistan. The US has already sent more troops to Iraq. And yet we are still seeing some horrific uh, bombings taking place in Baghdad in particular. Let me ask you, is the war on terror being won or lost? Well, I, I would submit to you that the war on terror is being won, but there is no one who is under the illusion that it is going to be uh, an easy task. There are tremendous challenges, uh, and we must expect that uh, the insurgents will, in fact, uh, do everything in their power to promote sectarian violence. Uh, and so, uh, as General Petraeus has said, this is a long-term uh, uh, project to assist the people of Iraq in establishing a democratically elected government that is accountable to them and effective in providing for their domestic tranquility. But uh, there will be uh, incidents such as this uh, as the insurgents and the Al-Qaeda associated forces adopt uh, new strategies and we in the uh, coalition of the willing must uh, adopt uh, strategies to meet those new events. Well the strategies that are being adopted specifically include this troop surge uh, of 20 or 30,000 US uh, combat troops into Baghdad and while it may still be early stages for this particular strategy it doesn't seem to be having much of a positive impact so far does it? Well, I, I think you, uh, as I indicated, you have to take the long-term view. Our chairman of our Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Peter Pace, was here in Australia and explained that there are three aspects uh, to the surge strategy. One is the uh, national security efforts to uh, disarm and to reduce the level of violence. And uh, there are statistics, despite these very prominent incidents, that the level of violence uh, is indeed being decreased. Number two, it's to provide capacity for and training for the Iraqi government police and military forces so that they can assume a greater and greater responsibility for uh, the effective government of their own country. And number three is uh, to provide hope and opportunity uh, by the Iraqi government itself by spending uh, money, uh, billions of dollars that it has, to provide jobs and infrastructure uh, to show that there can be an effective government in, in Iraq. All three of those elements are necessary and all three of them are long term. Well, putting aside then whether or not violence is actually being reduced or not uh, in Baghdad, the, the second point you raised there was the importance of training uh, the, uh, the Iraqis themselves to take care of their own security. Now, Australia has uh, combat troops and army trainers in southern Iraq considered a more uh, a safer place. Would the US like to see those Australian army trainers or the combat troops move to Baghdad where perhaps they could be more useful? Well, that's uh, certainly up to the government of the Commonwealth of Australia and to the military officers of the Commonwealth of Australia on how they uh, would deploy their troops. So uh, it's, it's a matter that must be determined on the field uh, by the military people there as to how most effectively uh, to utilize the members of the coalition of the willing. I, I think I, I really should say how much appreciated uh, and how effective the operations have been on both the uh, individuals in the Australian military who are uh, building uh, infrastructure and doing training as well as the uh, folks in uh, southern Iraq from Australia. They're doing an excellent job and it's much appreciated by the United States and more importantly by the people of Iraq. But to your knowledge, uh, Ambassador, was there any formal or informal request to Australia to shift some or all of those troops uh, to the Baghdad region? 
Uh, I'm unaware of any of those sorts of conversations, and it would not be necessarily something that uh, I would be involved in. I think that one of the things that President Bush has made plain is that the decisions on uh, military activities should be made by the military officers who are on the ground and most uh, knowledgeable and expert in those matters. And I'm sure that that would include uh, General Petraeus and his staff uh, in conjunction with members of the Australian military. Now, on the Australian troops who are heading to uh, Afghanistan, let's have a look at the situation there. Uh, we, we read over the weekend that John Howard actually wrote back in February to uh, Pakistan's President Musharraf, essentially asking for a greater effort from Pakistan. Do you share that view, that there needs to be a greater effort from Pakistan in the war on terror? Well, I, I think that uh, one of the things that all of us need to do is to be focused on the war on terror and how we can improve in various areas. Uh, so I, I don't think that uh, there is any uh, limitation on whether it's Pakistan or the United States or others uh, in NATO who are providing forces. We need to be very vigilant and we need to be very active in preventing a resurgence of the Taliban and the Al-Qaeda associated forces there. Uh, certainly activity on the Pakistani side of the, the border uh, is uh, important and Pakistan uh, has assured Prime Minister Howard and others that it is uh, doing activities there to uh, effectively uh, prevent uh, a resurgence of the Taliban and Al-Qaeda related forces. But is it time for a more concerted and coordinated international effort to get Pakistan to get more serious uh, about uh, trying to crack down on the Taliban and, and secure that border. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to uh, speculate on the uh, different sorts of activities that ca can go on between uh, members of the uh, coalition forces there that are attempting to uh, 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 assist the people of Afghanistan in uh, establishing their democracy in the same way that uh, coalition members are uh, assisting uh, the Iraqi government in uh, providing for the domestic uh, stability and tranquility uh, in its own country. If I can turn to 